Hey everyone, John Brand here with Solutions 8, and today we're going to be discussing the second installment of Performance Max. Things keep getting crazier by the day, so I'm going to keep rolling these things out, and you might see me backtrack a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's exciting. So let me actually share with you something new that just came out that I wanted to make mention, which is kind of piggybacking on video one, which is the Insights tab. That thing just keeps getting better and better, so let me share with you what I mean. Uh, inside the Performance Max in the Insights tab, we now can look at not only where the cold traffic search theme sales are coming from, but also we get additional uh, features now, which is this little drop down here, where you can look at the search category. Search theme has now been updated to search category. So changing up a little bit here, where we used to see search theme, now it's search category. Uh, and inside the search category, we get to conversions, the clicks, the impressions, the conversion value, the click through rates, the conversion rate, newer stuff. So we didn't have this before, or at least I didn't notice it yet. But now I wanted to put it in this video and then roll into asset groups and listing groups. Uh, I think today we're going to do listing groups. Next, we're going to do asset groups because we still have some more things in the work and still some evolution in there. But uh, really, really, really cool stuff. So just as an example, if I wanted to see what the conversion value is on a specific search uh, <laughs> search category, I'm going to struggle now to say search themes. Um, but then sort this descending or ascending. You can kind of see what is the most valuable and least valuable. Now, what's nice about this is the conversion value. I can actually see uh, what a, like this one here, example. And I'm so sorry, everything that says um, that's blurred out is actually going to be the brand name. So I can't share that with you, but there should be a lot of non-branded here. But as an example, uh, exam example, I can't speak today. Uh, Sasso Hot Sauce, as you can tell, this company sells hot sauce. But Sasso Hot Sauce is actually a competitor of ours. And we have uh, $57 in conversion value this last week. So what's nice is I not only can see, you know, the impressions, the conversion value, I'm sure over time, this is even going to be bigger and bigger and bigger. Hopefully we'll start to see like click share and search impression share at the top. Uh, man, just like a lot of, a lot of really cool stuff that's coming through the pipe. Uh, I think click the rate is going to be really something that's going to be awesome to watch because as you can see this Sasso hot sauce, I have a 5.56 click through rate. And now that is a competitive click through rate. That is fantastic. Um, now with this click through rate, I can't see where it's coming from. I don't know if this is on the, uh, um, over here. I don't know if this is on the search network, the shopping network, the YouTube network. I'm not exactly sure. So hopefully as this evolves, we'll have even more and more and more insights. Google ads has almost started to turn into performance max kind of across the board, but don't get stuck in the mindset that I just launched performance max campaign and runs. No, no, no. This is a whole new way of looking at all of the available tools, leveraging what we used to know about how Google Ads works and then leaning into it. So something I'm really excited about. But anyway, let's talk about listing groups because this is an area where I'm probably going to start to make some enemies here. <laughs> but I've tested this about 40 different times over and I have found some consistencies. Also had two different teams in Google tell me two different things. So we're going to find out who wins. Um, but the listing groups is nothing but the smart shopping campaign that you had running added to Performance Max. If you think about what Performance Max, at least for e-com, for retail, for for you know for e-commerce sales, not lead generation, we're going to cover that in another video, which is going to be even crazier because some things are going to blow your mind there, like how to leverage Performance Max actually with your form fields, not with everything else. Really, really cool stuff. Again, in the pro process, I want to make sure I have some real valuable data with examples I can share, not just theoreticals because theoreticals are useless. I like to share real, real results. Hopefully, it's taken well. Um, with the listing groups, since performance max is now turning into, sorry, since smart shopping is now turning into performance max, the listing groups are essentially just inherited from smart shopping. And whether you're going to build your own, you're going to use one click, you're going to wait for Google to automatically update you from smart shopping into performance max. It's up to you. But my, my opinion would be to start this now and start testing it. But when you see performance max, um, evolve into what it is now becoming, which is a omni-channel with remarketing uh, structure. You have to think about your listing groups differently than how your standard shopping product groups are, or, or even your smart shopping products product groups are. Now, I asked Google <clears throat> two different teams. If I had two different Performance Max campaigns running, and I had a listing group going after 10 products, and I had a different Performance Max campaign going after a different 10 products, if I got a click in Performance Max campaign A, and then they put a product into their cart and left from campaign B, who remarkets? One team said product B will be remarketed to from campaign B. Another team said no product A remarket, remarkets from 
the uh, original click. So if they clicked on a, a shopping ad and then put a different item in the cart, the original Performance Max campaign would actually start to remarket the product they're no longer interested back to them. The one team said they got this right from the person that's actually working on Performance Max, like right from the source, the horse's mouth. So that one, to me, is where I'm going to go. And again, the team that I spoke to that had the different opinion that says, no, the first Performance Max campaign will actually remarket um, the product from the first click, uh, regardless of what they did afterwards. That team is working on an account of mine that's over a million dollars a month in ad spend. So I think that I'm, I'm tending to lean towards their their answer more only because they said, hey, we got right to the horse's mouth and it's a team I know and trust for a long time. So that's how we're going to act accordingly, act accordingly right as of now. So what this means now is if you're going to be running one big performance max campaign, you're going to need to run all of the products in your listing group and not exclude anything unless you just know you do not do not want to market it at all. Like it's or it's out of stock. I'm never getting it again. I don't want people to buy it. If there's a reason why you do not want to sell that product, then exclude it. But if you're trying to push something, don't use an asset group to push. There's a big change now. Using asset groups to leverage the inbound and outbound strategies across all seven networks of Google, and there's seven, yes, it's search, shopping, GSP, YouTube, discovery, display, and maps. That's where Performance Max goes now. You have to think about if I'm using an asset group with very specific landing page, with very specific 15 images and five videos and five headlines and five long headlines and five descriptions, and I'm going out into the ether with, with all of this ad spend, I'm going to need those products enabled. And even if I don't have an asset group for that group of products, I still need them enabled because they might naturally find themselves buying those products or even being interested in those products. And I don't want to stop my revenue because it means I paid for the interest, but I failed on the remarketing. My campaign is just going to be less effective. So in terms of the listing groups, the listing groups, I think, should need to be remaining on. Now, there's an issue here, though, and it's an issue that you're going to have to get prepared to contend with. And here's what I mean. Traditionally, and again, these are going to be blocked off. Actually, you know, some classic hot sauce variety. That's OK. I'd like to so see some titles. You know, they sell hot sauce. And there's no brand in here. This page here is actually going to have some brand in there. So my apologies. Uh, there's going to be some things that are blurred here on the left hand side. Just imagine these are hot sauces with names. <laughs> um, but you'll notice something. I have all conversion, all conversion value, and all conversion value by cost. But what I'm not seeing is conversions. So this is bad because remember how typically you know you have companies that will accidentally duplicate track. It's like well we're tracking your added cards as a sale and your begin checkouts as a sale and your checkouts as a sale. That's doing that here by default. So just know that inside of your listing groups, you're actually you're actually seeing an, a, a, a not the truth, really. You're seeing a culmination of everything. And now, since there is no way to segment by conversion action, just assume that everything that you're counting as a conversion is now being ran into here. So when you look at the conversion value by cost, um, or if you look at you know, whatever it may be, you're actually hindering yourself by thinking that, oh, I made 139 sales. That's not true. You actually have only made possibly 40 sales or however many there is and multiple tracking. So the way to actually fix this, and I'm not going to do it now because I have to go through and, and go into an area that I can't share with you just because it's, it's, it's from the client. But it's very simple. If you're running Performance Max, this should be really, really simple. Go into your conversions and simply shut off all conversions that you're not counting as a primary. Turn them off. Not exclude and not put them as secondary. Turn them off. You need to simply just stop running them. If for e-commerce now, if you're having conversion value, it's going to be simpler because if you have a sale, you're going to have conversion value. But if you had a webinar, or it's not a webinar, if you had a newsletter sign up, hopefully you're not using a conversion value there. Uh, if you have, you know, contact form, hopefully you're not using a conversion value there, or you're defaulting it to one. So that should not affect your conversion value. But if the only conversion value that you're actually measuring is your actual purchase, that's the only time your conversion value, that's a way to kind of pseudo make this into, okay, okay well, what am I actually counting? And regardless of how many conversions, what's my actual conversion value? So it's like a ROAS. So from there, you can see that do you have a lot of impressions and clicks, but very low conversions. Now, the next thing though, 
is that mind your attribution model. Your attribution model is going to dictate what you think you see. So if you're using first click or last click, now comes a time where I'm actually shifting a little bit more into data driven. Data driven seems to be a little bit more viable here for a few things. One is the insights tab is actually going to be dictated by your attribution model, your search categories now. <laughs> they used to be search themes and search now search categories. Anyway, your search categories now are actually indicated as a, uh, well, how much you're attributing by, based on your attribution model. I'll give you the reason why this is important. You're going to have a very difficult time extracting brand out of your performance max campaigns. But if you see branded keywords coming in based on your attribution model is going to tell you where they originally started from. So for example, if you see a lot of branded conversions coming in and you're on first click. It means that the first time they've interacted with that campaign performance max is from the brand. Aha, very easy. If you're using last click, uh oh, well, now you're stealing your search category data away and giving it to brand. So now that part, uh oh, now I have too much brand. So you kind of lose where the search theme originally was. So data driven or something that actually starts to split out those conversions, I think now is actually a lot better uh, to use a attribution model that is a little bit more sharing because now I can say, okay, if I see some 0.36 and 0.79 and 0.91s and 0.55s, to search themes, and then I still see brand, and my brand is 0.73 and 0.51 and blah, blah, blah. You can start to see, okay, that this is actually generating interest on some search categories that later on come back and Google the brand. Perfect, that's what we want. When we're running these campaigns out separately, like a smart shopping campaign and a brand campaign, well, if you use last click, the brand campaign wins because smart shopping did all the work and brand campaign scooped up the conversion, bad. First click. If you use first click too often, then you're having your smart shopping campaign get all of the good value, but you do have some branded searches that come in through smart shopping, or you have your brand campaign starting to spend too much wildly because it's trying to get too many conversions and not actually having the conversion value being attributed to it. Linear or position-based or data-driven makes a lot more sense now because it's kind of all honed into one. And so giving attribution to brand alongside of search category split makes sense because A, whether it's a branded conversion or non-branded conversion, I'm attributing it back to the same campaign, fine. But inside of that campaign, how do I then attribute it? That's the cool part. So using data-driven, I think is something that you're going to wanna to move towards or at least position-based or at least linear. Do something that splits out those conversions so that you're not just counting too many brands as to, well, crap, I don't know if that was the last thing they did, the first thing that they did, and I just see brand. Now, when you do search themes, knowing that we have our insights tab being a little bit more broken out, you can now start to see what attribution models affect what search themes or search categories. I'm gonna mess this up so many times. Going back to the listing groups though, same thing. If you're using only your attribution model that is counting those conversions and you're using data driven, you can start to see what earned a click and what earned the remarket. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult to identify from a trend analysis. Um, that's where tools like Norpium come into place. But when you're looking at what products got the first click and what product ended up getting the sale, this part here, without removing those conversion actions, becomes a nightmare. Because it's like, did they first click on it? Maybe. Did they last click on it? Maybe. Was it the middle click? Maybe. What actually happened? Well, there's add to cars, there's begin checkouts, there's checkouts. This becomes very difficult to manage. So you need to reduce the um, conversions. One way that Google said, and this is something really cool, I can't share it yet because we're waiting for it, but there is going to be the ability for your Performance Max campaigns to optimize for new customers only. Not just new and returning with an emphasis on new. New customers only. This campaign will not go after your customer list. Now there's some things here that you have to do to get prepared for this. Um, one, why is it relevant is that you actually have to take your conversion action that uh, the campaign is going after your performance max campaign, change it over from account level to campaign level. That makes this easier. Now, when you have a campaign level goal, you're actually going to be only tracking the campaign level goal that you give it. Now, since you can only give it basically a conversion set, make sure a side of your conversion set is the only one active is your purchase. That's going to fix that problem of the multiple tracking. And then we're going to fix the problem with getting NCA, which is a new customer acquisition only, the new one, uh, NCAO, I guess, getting that into Performance Max and popping it up and being able to leverage it. And as soon as I have one, I'll share that with you. I'm waiting. It takes about seven days. But as soon as that's in here, 
then it's going to be it's going to be game over. Um, some advanced strategies that we'll be sharing with you later is how to run two identical performance max campaigns, one going after new and repeat, and one going after new only. So this way you actually have a new campaign in performance max that's driving only new customers with specific CAC and ROAS goals. And then you have the remarketing campaign that's doing a really good job at just scooping up those existing conversions like how Smart Shopping does. Yeah, so a lot of really cool stuff. But regardless, this is the first time that a campaign is channeling a user on all seven networks of Google. And unless, and knowing that those two performance max campaigns that if you're running, don't share an audience for remarketing, you have to start with all of your products that you want to sell on. You want to, want to sell on, turn on. So just start with everything on, unless you know that you do not want to sell those. So this is my, our, our so far recommendation. We've seen it work the best. We've tried to segment them out and really to work. We tried to run them in comparison to standard shopping. Didn't really work. Anytime that we leave all of our products in Performance Max turned on, unless we have another Performance Max campaign that is targeting a whole different set of products that have nothing to do with the asset groups, unless we keep them keep them all in one, we actually we don't leverage the the new smart features that Performance Max has. Think about the difference. You're going from six individual campaigns target six individual audiences on six individual networks. We've now just rolled them into one. Things that we thought were best practice before, test them. I don't believe that a lot of these will carry over. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be more information. Uh, I'm doing these quite frequently um, and there's gonna be more to come and I'm really, really excited. So as soon as I have kind of like the best practice and examples, uh, we'll be sharing with you. Uh, thank you so much, really appreciate it. If you like this video, please like, comment, share, subscribe, tell your grandmother, I will see you for iteration number three. Wait, before you go, I'm constantly looking for amazing people to come join our team. So if you're passionate about Google ads and you're passionate about customer success, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. And we'd love to see you as a part of the Solutions 8 team. Also, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that we actually know what we're doing. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. We shoot a video every single day and I don't want you to miss out on any of it. Lastly, if you have questions, comments, concerns, confessions, or you just hate my face and my voice, go ahead and hit us up in the comments. We get very little human interaction, and even the heckling is something that I kind of get a kick out. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being subscribers if you're a subscriber. Don't forget to apply if you're interested in working at Solutions 8. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow.